In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to become a website designer without a college degree and without knowing how to code. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. I have been a designer for seven years and I have seen all the things that come with website design, graphic design, brand design, and I'm always learning. But I've been getting the question a lot lately, which is, how do I become a website designer? Do I have to become a website designer if I'm a graphic designer and all the things? So in this video, I'm going to break down simple steps as to how to become a website designer and knowing the difference between that and other kind of niches within this industry. So let's get right into it. Number one, it's super important to know the difference between website design, website development, graphic design, brand design, all of those titles. So website design and web development are two very different things. And I think that a lot of times we can get mistaken on the fact that every website designer is a website developer or vice versa. So I really wanted to start this video by clearing the air in terms of what that really means. So website design are those designers that really understand like the user experience, the user interface, how to make it flow really nicely and how to make it look beautiful. And a lot of times this is done using Figma or mocking it up on a platform like Adobe XD or Figma um, and really just breaking down the user experience and the overall visual design of the website. Now, a website developer are those that are very experienced with putting that mock-up into a functional website on whatever platform it is that you decide to use. So website designer versus web developer are two different things. Now, graphic designer and brand designer are also two different things. And I think a lot of times we get mistaken as designers of wearing so many hats, but it's really important to know the difference because when you start to get into this field and this industry, it's kind of a way to niche yourself down to a specific service type or, you know, like a specific offer that you have. So knowing those differences can kind of help you find your place within this industry. Um, but graphic design, in my opinion, is a really broad term for a lot of those tasks. I tend to refer to myself as a graphic designer because I design logos, brands, websites, all the things, and I don't really like to confine myself to just website design. Brand designers are those who design logos and colors and the overall, the entire brand that you're seeing. So this is important to know because every time I design a website for my clients, I do require that they have some sort of branding. In the past, I used to let that slide and I used to just use what they have or maybe just use like super simple colors, but they just weren't reaching a new audience and they weren't really improving very much. So now I like to make sure that they have branding before the website. And if they do, that's great. And if it looks amazing, that's awesome. But if they're starting brand new and they need help with that, typically I like to kind of like add that onto the package. So I believe that it's really important to know the differences between all these different services that you can provide to know where it is that you fit in within that. So that's the main difference. If you have questions on that, let me know. But not every web developer is a designer and not every designer is a developer. However, there are times when you know how to do both. You don't have to limit yourself to just one or the other. You can do all of them, or you can just pick and choose and hire a developer. So many ways to go about it, and there's really no right or wrong way. The second thing that you should start doing if you wanna become a website designer and developer is to understand all the platforms out there and which one that you prefer to use. When I first started learning how to become a website designer and developer, I learned on WordPress because at the time, WordPress was like number one. There really wasn't Show It, there, wasn't, there was Squarespace, there was Wix, but they weren't really at the level that they are now. Um, so I did learn on WordPress and I'm actually really thankful that I did because I would say that it's still a really common platform to use, especially for those businesses that want to grow and have a lot of traffic to their website. You can really grow with WordPress and that's one of the reasons I do love it. 
and also it's so customizable like anything you want to do is possible so wordpress is a great platform and i still love to use it that's where i first learned how to do it and i actually first learned from a developer that was helping the marketing agency that I was working at. So I had the really lucky opportunity to learn from someone that already knew how to do it, but that's kind of how I jumped into web design. But if I had to start all over and I had to kind of figure out which platform I wanna use, I personally would wanna know the difference between WordPress, Showit, Wix, Squarespace, um, Webflow, all those things, I would wanna know how that can benefit my clients and how that can really make the website come to life. So there's so many platforms. That's why I wanted to mention this one. And I feel like a lot of times we just follow in the footsteps of whatever designer we follow uses. But at this point in time, if you're starting brand new, I would figure out which one you prefer to use and which one you like and which one that you feel comfortable teaching your clients how to use also. Because when you build your client's websites and they launch it, they potentially could be reaching out to you for help in the future on how to fix things. And you want to make sure that yourself is comfortable using it so you can help your clients in the future too, if needed. Um, so I would research the platforms. Like I said, I do typically prefer WordPress, but I have really been enjoying using Showit because it's a really awesome platform for making a creative and really beautiful website and it's kind of like you have creative freedom on show it whereas other platforms you have to be a little more strategic on how to lay things out based on the tools that are available but I like WordPress because like I mentioned anything anything is possible but I would say that WordPress is a little bit more of a learning curve for brand new designers. I wanted to give a little shameless plug. I do have a WordPress website design course. If that is something you do want to learn, you want to get more familiar with it, I have a course on that and it goes over how to use WordPress and how to use it without having to know how to use code. So I typically use a visual builder called Divi. There's also visual builders like Elementor and I think it's Avada or Veda or something like that. There's so many tools out there to help you build the website without having to know code. So don't be afraid to try it out and kind of play around with it. But like I mentioned, I do have a course that can help you out with that too. That brings me into my next tip, which is to take courses online. I typically learn by actually just like putting all of those tools into practice. It's hard for me to just listen to someone share how to do it. So I would recommend finding some courses that at least give you some pointers on where to get started, maybe where to sign up for the platforms you're interested in, how to mock everything up. Just take a course that kind of breaks down that process for you so you know the process to take in terms of like a step-by-step -step flow for the website design and development. I do have that course that can help you a lot, but I recommend looking around, finding which instructor or which course kind of speaks to you the most and which one might help you the most and really just diving into that. And if you want to like work as you take the course, that can help too with learning. So if you like sign up for a WordPress site or a show it site or Squarespace, whatever, and take the course while you're actually playing around with the platform. I typically feel that that's like the best way to learn. There's so many courses online. There's also so many YouTube videos online to help you learn. So my typical process of learning is just starting and doing it. And when I get stuck looking up YouTube videos on like how to get me through it or taking a course and looking up how to get through it that way. So I would recommend looking at courses online. There's so many of them. And that is why I mentioned you don't really need a college degree to do this. There's so much content online to help you. And a lot of what I'm doing now is self-taught and just learned from online education. So highly recommend looking into that as well. Now, my next tip is what I would do if I could start all over and something that I still am interested in doing myself, but that is taking some courses or learning more about the basics of UX design. So UX design is like a user experience. So when you go onto websites, there's an experience behind it. Every section on that website is meant to speak to you. It's meant for you to take action and that has to be done in a really strategic way. And it's typically really hard to just jump into a website design without knowing at least the basics of that. So I do go over basics of that in my course, but 
I would recommend looking that up online, maybe taking a course specifically on UX to understand what makes a good user experience. Also, you can learn by going onto websites you like and kind of having more of that mindset of how these sections are speaking to you and what it is that they're doing to make you take action because every website has its own experience and I think that's one of the really cool things about web design is that you can make it your own and you can really make it speak to the target audience so that is like so important I can't stress that enough because I would hate for you to jump into web development without understanding why it is that you're putting certain things in specific places so I recommend breaking it down all the way to the design, the sections, the call to action, what it is that you should have on the website to make it actually efficient, and that can really help you get started into how to lay everything out. And actually, when I start my website design projects, I typically will draw out the framework on a piece of paper just so I know like how I want the user to be taken through the website. I don't want to just throw a bunch of information at them right away. I typically want them to get to know me, get to know my services, get to know why I'm different than other designers and kind of speak to them in that way, in a more relatable way. And then I start to trickle in those call to actions, whether that's working with me, taking my courses, stuff like that. So UX design is very important and I definitely recommend understanding the basics before you get started. The next tip is to take everything you learned with the UX design, with the design basics, and putting that into a platform like Figma. Figma is awesome. I used to use Adobe XD all the time, but they've gone back and forth on whether or not to keep XD, to put more effort into XD, so I made the transition to using Figma. And I love it because it allows me to really put that user experience into play and actually mock up the website design. So if I were to tell someone starting off, then I would recommend putting that in your process and drawing out that user experience and actually designing it into a mock-up form. I typically prefer to mock everything up before I develop it because for a few reasons. The first reason is it allows me to see it from like a wide angle perspective of like, how's this user experience looking? It allows me to collaborate with my clients. They can leave notes and comments and it's just a really collaborative tool. Um, So that's a big, big reason for it. The other reason is because sometimes if I'm really busy, I will hand it off to a developer to make it functional to add all those transitions, the hover effects, all that, because that takes time. And typically when I have it all designed and mocked up, I don't have to guide them in any way. I just send it off to them and they can develop it for me. So there's a lot of reasons for that. I think it's much easier to edit on a mock-up on Figma than it is to edit a already built out section. So I typically like to tell my clients that they have to submit all their edits, all their feedback before I develop it to keep me mentally sane from having to like go redesign and develop everything and also to kind of provide them an experience that is collaborative. Okay, my next tip is to take everything you've learned, to take the design skills you've gained, all of that and practice, practice, practice. I feel so lucky that I was able to work at an agency where I actually was able to have hands-on experience with clients. However, I know that might not always be the case. Maybe you are working a nine to five or maybe you're just not sure if this is something you want to do yet. Then I would recommend going and finding some free project briefs. There's a lot of websites that have free like random little client briefs where you can take that and just pretend it's a real client and actually practice by designing on Figma and developing it on the platform that you've researched and chose. I would recommend practicing in that way. Also, a lot of AI tools like ChatGPT and stuff, can you can ask them, hey, give me a client that I can design a website for, and they will spit out an actual project brief for you. So I'd recommend getting those project briefs, or if you're in a situation where you might have a client that you can practice with, offer them like a free landing page or something, and practice and just put it into into work. I think that's the best way to get started is to not overthink it and just start. Um, That's really what I did. I look back at my old websites. They weren't the greatest, but 
a lot of those clients can stick with you long term and you can help improve it over time for them. So I just recommend practicing as much as you possibly can. Okay, my last tip is to understand what makes a website run efficiently and smoothly and effectively. I think that a lot of times we can focus on how the website looks, if it's beautiful, if it is functioning right. However, we sometimes forget to look at what the point of a website is. The point of the website is to either make sales, book services, spread the information about what it is that you offer, maybe to spit out information on like a blog. There's always a purpose behind the website and you can't just make it look beautiful and not have it functioning properly. So I would make sure that you put your site through a speed test Make sure that the site is loading fast because that could be the number one reason why a client or a user completely just gets off the website if it's not loading. Um, Also, if you have too much information and too much to read and it's not in a really digestible way, um, you might have clients that aren't staying on your website for very long. So if you're curious on like what those analytics look like and you are really paying attention to how your website's performing... I would recommend installing Google Analytics. If you're using WordPress, there's a lot of plugins that can have the analytics right in your dashboard, but installing that can allow you to see what's going on behind the scenes because that's truly the most important thing. And at the end of the day, a website's not one of those things that you just upload, publish, and it's there forever. You have to keep up with it. You have to maintain it. If you really want to stay on search engines, you have to update it a lot. Um, I wouldn't say like a lot, a lot, but if you really are paying attention to that, a blog can really help you stay relevant. Um, And it just will help you get boosted if you're following some of the trending topics or if you're, you know, speaking to what people are searching. So I really wanted to mention that because I think a lot of times we can forget to look at what is going to make my website actually be seen and perform. So SEO is a whole other topic. I can make a whole other video on it. Um, there, um, we can make tons of videos on it because there's so many things that come with it. But that's basically your search engine optimization. And that's one of the most important things that you can pay attention to if you really want the website to be like chef's kiss, an amazing website. So I, if you're interested in learning more about that, there's lots of content online, but I specifically like to learn from Neil Patel. He has great content on it. Um, I can provide some links down below that have helped me learn it. And also on my WordPress site, I like to install some plugins like Yoast SEO, which helps guide me in terms of like what SEO to add onto the pages on the back end how to and like how to make it actually be seen by Google. So I I didn't want this video to completely like end without me mentioning how important that is. It's so important. There's so many things that can make a website not be seen. And just keep in mind that your website is getting crawled by Google. Like they have like these I like to picture them as like spiders crawling through your website, pulling those keywords, pulling that information. Maybe they're looking at how big the file sizes are and they're not going to push that to the top because it's loading so slow. So if you pay attention to that and you make it really optimized, you can start to get ranked on the first page of Google much easier. So it takes time. It's not like an overnight success thing. It takes a lot of time. But if you're going to have your website for a long time, I believe that it's an important thing to pay attention to. All right, you guys, those are all my tips on how to become a web designer and developer. I really hope that helped you out. If you are interested in getting into this industry, I could not recommend it enough. It's so much fun. I love designing websites and learning about them. So if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it so much if you gave it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and go check out that WordPress web design course if you want to learn more about it. And I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.